There's something I should probably confess. Secret pedo. <laughs> no, um, the ops actually. What, you only sleep with pensioners? Oh, uh, no, I, I, I don't sleep with anyone actually. I'm asexual. What? You're not interested in sex, like, at all? Yeah. Is that a problem? No, not really. It's fine if it is, like, I understand if you're like, no, I need a man for penetration. No, I'm, I'm not that shallow. It's not shallow, like, not necessarily, just... People have different expectations of a... of... of dating. Look, I like you. I really enjoyed tonight, and if it goes somewhere... I'd really like to see if it does go somewhere. Okay. I just... I didn't want to lead you on if you were looking for a sexual relationship. I'm not looking for anything in particular. We get on, I thought you were cute, so I asked you out and you agreed. Okay, we're having fun, right? Of course. I just thought it was good to be open and honest from the start, you know, like... But if a woman asks you on a date, you can't just be like, I don't want to have sex with you! you know? It's a bit forward. <clears throat> just a bit. Have you... Have you dated asexual before? Not as far as I'm aware. But I don't have sex with most people I go out for drinks with. Maybe they're all asexuals. Must be. Do you have any do you have any questions? What do you mean? Like, you know, asexuality is quite rare, you know, if there's anything you want to ask, go ahead. No, that seems very I don't wanna make you feel uncomfortable. No one would be uncomfortable, you know. I'm an open book. There's nothing I can think of. Go on. No matter how inappropriate. Okay. Have you ever had sex? No. But you do go out for drinks with people? Sometimes, like now. Do you masturbate? Uh, not a cocktail bar. You say that with a spoon spoon? <laughs> exactly. Do you have any questions for me, as in... Allosexual? As an allosexual, or just in general? Yeah, I do actually. Go on. What are you next for When I used to work as a waiter, there was this one customer, he was called Brian, who always used to come in like five or six times a week. He was a total creep. In what way? Like he always made these sexual remarks and he had this creepy smile. He spent most of the evening telling everyone how horny he is. Oh, yeah. Did you manage to know about this? Yes. And he'd joke along with it. What, well, he was in on it? Well, it was more like... Brian would say something creepy and my manager would just reply with something light-hearted. I think he was trying to turn the whole situation into a joke to make everyone feel more comfortable. Did it work? What do you think? Fair enough. One time, when he was really drunk, he put his hands on me. Where? He grabbed my breasts. Then he put his other hand on my thigh and started moving upwards. Okay, I'm so sorry. I dropped a glass. It was his drink, but I was just so shocked. I dropped it on the floor and ran behind the bar. And when it comes to broken glass, managers have the hearing of a dog. So he gave me a dustpan and brush and I just said, no, no, I'm not going back out there. What did he say? He looked at me and told me he knew I'd broken a glass and I had to get rid of the mess. It's awful. And I told him what had happened. He said he'd clean it up. I locked myself in the bathroom. I splashed some cold water on my face then headed back out. Only to find Brian sat in his usual seat. You managed to have kicked him out? They stood there, laughing together, 
and he continued to come in five or six times a week. My manager's words were, don't worry, you don't have to serve him. It's awful, Gary. I had to quit. I'm so sorry you went through that. I feel guilty. Because when I hear people talk about sexual assault, so many people go through horrific things. And what I went through was comparatively minor, but it still affected me. But no matter what everyone else has been through, you can still be affected by things that have happened to you. Yeah, I know. But I don't think about it so much anymore. So, when you told me you weren't interested in sex, I thought, <sighs> I get it, you know? Have someone touch you like that without your consent can really make you feel closed off like you can't trust anyone. So although I've never called myself a sexual before, I sometimes feel comfortable around sex. So the idea of a relationship without sex sounds good to me. I don't know if I did realise I just never realised there's anything else. So you don't you don't think about sex when you're a little kid and I guess I'm still like that. Not that I'm a little kid, just like you know, it's just an area of development which didn't develop. I'm okay with that. Or anything like that. I just. It's just not something that interests me. Why can't you trust me? Magnus, I do trust you. Then you'll forgive me for being a little confused when you constantly assume I'm lying to you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have checked your phone. No, you shouldn't have. 
And you needn't have, because you know perfectly well that if there's something you want to know, you can just ask me and I'll tell you. I know. And you did ask me and I did tell you. I know. So why do you need to check my phone to see if I'm lying to you? Because I thought maybe you needed to talk to someone. And that maybe there was some forum or page you were checking instead of talking to me. And it's not healthy to keep things bottled up. Don't I get a save when it comes to what I tell you? Well, there are some things couples need to know about each other. If I had children I wasn't telling you about, wouldn't you want to know? If you had children, you'd be a mother. If I'd been abused, I'd just be someone who was once abused. It'd be in the past, not in the present. But these things affect us in the long term, Magnus. So that's it. You think I'm only asexual because I've been abused and it scared me sexless? No! I'm asexual, Kerry, because I don't like sex. The same way you don't like ice cream when most people do. I'm not broken. Is that what you think of me? That I'm broken? I didn't mean it like that. Well, what did you mean? I just don't understand why you constantly assume I've been abused when I've told you repeatedly it's not the case. I just think it would make sense. <laughs> oh, well, well done you. You found the final piece of the jigsaw puzzle and you've solved me. Magnus, I'm sorry, okay? How long are you going to keep on at this, because as far as I was aware, we'd settled it. Magnus, we're a couple. We should be allowed to ask each other personal questions. Can I not do that? Yes, you can. Once. And then when I answer, you take me at my word, because otherwise, what's the point? I know what I did was wrong, but I'm just asking you to see things from my side. Well, go on, tell me your side, because as far as I can tell, none of this makes any sense. Magnus, do you have any idea how hard it is to open up to someone about sexual assault? And when it's someone you love and they ignore you, it's a million times harder. I didn't ignore you, I empathised. But you've never opened up to me the way I have to you. Kerry, I've always been a completely open book with you. I've never lied to you, I've never kept anything from you. So, when you said nothing? It's because there was nothing to say. Okay. Kerry... What were you expecting me to say? I don't know. I guess I just wanted to know we were the same. But we're not the same. I don't want to date someone who's the same as me. I've met me. I'm unbearable. You're not unbearable, Magnus. I just kind of hope. You hope what? Do you have any idea what you're saying? You're saying you wish I'd been assaulted. I didn't mean it like that. Well, what did you mean? I just don't want to feel alone. Do you feel alone when you're with me? I told you my darkest secret. And I didn't realise you have no dark secrets. Sometimes when someone shares something with you, you have nothing to share back. You can only take. Can we forget this and think about something else?